Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. Today I thought I'd go through how to get an allotment and what is an allotment and what does it mean to have an allotment. So let's get started. So what is an allotment? In a nutshell it is a piece of land that is used to grow things that are rented from the local authorities. There's two types of allotment. There's either a committee-led allotment, which is volunteers from the allotment going ahead and volunteering their time to run the allotment, making decisions like, I don't know, what goes up on the bullet board, if you're going to have a buy, bring by a sale, if you put up a shed, etc. Or it's run by the local council. Now, if it is run by the local council, it tends to be a lot more expensive. Whereas if it is committee led, it tends to be a lot cheaper because obviously people are volunteering their time. <laughs> so the size of the plot does vary. Some of them have a full size plot, which is 10 poles, uh, or a half plot, which is five poles. The allotment that we have have almost all full plots, 10 poles, which is, I believe, 250 square meters. So quite a, quite a sizable size. But uh, there is one half plot because one of the committee, sorry, one of the uh, plot holders decided to turn half of his plot into a car park and got permission for it. So Bob's your uncle, fun as your aunt, that's what he's doing. How to find one? <laughs> so how I found my allotment is I phoned up my local council and I was like, oi, I want an allotment. I didn't say, oi, I was like, excuse me, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Telephone voice and everything. Um, and I decided to ask them, you know, if there was any allotments in my area. There was a couple that were uh, council led, so they went ahead and gave me their numbers. I phoned them up and was like, hello, can I put my name down? And I also found a load of allotments on Facebook. And I messaged them and was like, hello, um, I would really like to have an allotment. This is my name, contact number, blah, 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 and where I live. Because you have to have an lo allotment locally, I believe. That's how it works in my area anyway. So it was really quite illuminating doing it that way. Um, but that's basically how you get an allotment. Now, there can be quite a long waiting list for an allotment. And if you are worried about that, you do I want to put your name down now. Because there's no point of being like, oh, there's such a long waiting list. And then waiting a year before you put your name down. Because you'll probably be seen in that time. What happened with me is it was about a year and a half I waited for a allotment. And because I put my name down to every allotment in the area, I seriously still get phone calls like, do you want an allotment? I'm like, nah, dude, I've already got one. So uh, once again, I'd be like, oh, no, I'm terribly sorry. But I have, I have got a occupation already. Um, and um, yeah, so it can be a very long time depending on where you are. They can be very popular. But what I found in my humble opinion is that people get allotment and they do circle through the newcomers quite quickly because people have never had allotment before or never like grown so much as a tomato. So there are a few people that grab an allotment or are on the waiting list and as soon as they've got one or they get called up they're like no um, I don't have time anymore or I don't want one anymore or my situation's changed you see what I mean so it can be that you jump up through the list even if there's lots of people on it the list um, goes down quite quickly also you get people leaving all the time too uh, for very different reasons you for example there was um, a man on our allotment who had his allotment for years and then he was just he said he's too old for it and he wanted to slow down so he actually ended up getting a half plot and sharing it with someone but lots of people kind of like decide that they no longer want to do it my nan did the same so what are you allowed to do on an allotment mm -mm -mm. there are a ton of rules on an allotment and the rules are there because of silly things that have happened in the past or because of legislation around what you're allowed to do for example you're not actually allowed to grow vegetables or eggs or meat or whatever it is for um, reselling it's one of the rules of having an allotment so that one's pretty much standard every allotment will be slightly different and have different rules uh, most of the rules and regulations around allotments will be a committee a commitment to be weed free and that doesn't mean that like if you have one weed they're like get out no it's like if you have quite a few weeds they'll like 
tell you to weed and that's about it really most people on the allotment like they're not there to catch you out they're going to be there to be nice so just bear that in mind um you've got to keep your allotment in good condition so for example if you're you know using it for a fly tip inside then obviously that's not going to fly uh -huh. <laughs> so no business activities at all that's one of the rules that i believe is across the uk but if your allotment's like different let me know it down below you're not allowed to cause a nuisance you're not allowed to be annoying <laughs> to your fellow allotment tears. I know that there was a very, very small dog that barks and barks and barks and barks and barks on the allotment. And it was very funny because one of the committee members came over to me and was like, your dog, your small yappy dog is very yappy. Can you not like tie him up? And I was like, right, I hate to say that you're wrong, but there's a, there's a lot of things you can call my dog, okay? but small and yappy aren't them. I was like, I've got a 50 kilo dog that is absolutely huge. And when he barks the window rattle, I was like, I don't think that you've got the right person. So things like that happened, you know, it's just a misunderstanding, but try not to be a nuisance to anyone. That includes having fires. It's really important not to have your fire when there's a football game over the park and they're all smothered in smoke. Um, it's just being a little bit considerate of everyone else around you. Um, no buildings without consent is a very common one to have. Um, on the allotment and it's just so that the committee knows what you're doing and to be honest i don't think anyone in the history of my allotment has ever been told no for polytunnels sheds etc um, you just have to ask permission and they they'll say yes but they just want to give it the okay uh, because you can only have so many buildings because if not you'll just have you know a house on your plot um lots my my personal allotment doesn't allow concrete so you can't concrete anything into the allotment um because they want everything to be temporary to be taken down so my chicken coop doesn't have concrete on it my greenhouse etc those things those structures and my what are they called fences don't have um concrete on them so it makes everything a little bit more temporary the weirdest rule on my allotment is you're not allowed to sleep there which must have a story behind it but yeah absolutely no you're not allowed to sleep there especially overnight so don't know what happened there i've never asked but as i was going through this and making all these like rule uh, writing down the rules i thought i'd include that and i thought it was a bit weird um there's also other things like you're not allowed to bring firearms on the allotment or explosives and things like that i don't know how people it's like i i can't be bothered to dig and then it all just lands back down you're like yeah I it's all aerated now <laughs> but yeah there's some rules and regulations like i said they're different for each one we're allowed chickens on our allotment i believe you're allowed chickens and rabbits on the allotment but um it varies from different allotment sites what you're allowed to use most allotments have hoses but i do know a couple of people who don't have hoses on their allotment and they have to use uh, water butts we have water butts on our allotment but we have the hose as well which is really cool they they do turn off the water every so often like when it gets really cold it honestly makes sense because when they don't turn off the water the hose pipe freezes splits etc and it's just a big mess to clean up and um, they did that last year and everybody had to replace their taps so it was just like oh can you turn it off next time please they did this year which is great once again they're all volunteers and life gets in the way doesn't it um so yeah, just keeping that in the back of your mind, like no one's perfect, obviously.